and welcome to St. James. And uh, welcome particularly on this special day, All Saints Day. And All Saints Day is an unusual feast day for a couple of reasons. Firstly, on every other Saints Day, we look back and we remember a particular saint. Whereas today, we look forward as we celebrate the hope that one day all God's people will be gathered together in heaven. And also today, it's unusual in that we count ourselves amongst the number who are being celebrated. We, like all God's people, are included in the great cloud of witnesses who are the saints. St. Paul says, We give thanks to the Father who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. And on this week of our election, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, Guide the people of the United States in the election of a president and other officials and representatives. Give us clarity in our electoral process in the weeks ahead. Give us the gift of a peaceful election and grant us clear understanding of our electoral results. That by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Revelation. After this, I, John, looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, 
Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. How often, I wonder, since the pandemic began, have you heard yourself saying, I just can't wait till we get back to normal? I know for me, it's on average of about twice a day. We all want to get back to the lives that we were living before the virus struck. We miss normal things like having people over, children going to school, hugging people, worshipping inside the church. I found myself this week missing planning things. I just wanted to sit down with my diary like I enjoy doing and put in a couple of fun trips. We can't wait for 2020 to end and normal life resume. And it was in that context that I read the two lessons set for this week and I found them to be challenging what I thought of as normal. They prompted me to ask the question, what exactly is normal? Who defines normal? What does normal look like to God? And does my vision of normality cohere with his? Look at the Beatitudes that we heard in our Gospel reading with which Jesus begins his wonderful Sermon on the Mount. And I have often understood these in the past, like many others, to be a sort of be attitudes. This is how you have to be in order to earn God's favour. But what I noticed about them as I read them this week is that there's nothing transactional about them. The Beatitudes don't contain a single should, ought or thou shalt. The Beatitudes are not commandments or moral injunctions. Jesus simply lays them out as a description of reality. Jesus is saying, this is how the world works. This is Jesus' normal. Of course, 
It's a very different understanding of normality to the one we see and experience in the world around us. We live in a world dominated by the loudest, strongest, wealthiest and most privileged. We live in a world where greed and selfishness pay big time, whilst meekness, mercy and mournfulness earn little more than contempt. We live in a world where securing my own ease and comfort is my right. Let the rest of creation be damned. In the Beatitudes, Jesus claims that the poor, the marginalised, the meek, the hungry, the merciful, the pure-hearted, the peaceful, are blessed. They are the fortunate ones. They are the ones whose lives are aligned with the heart and character of God. They will experience comfort and inherit the earth and be filled, receive mercy and be called children of God. Jesus' is normal is a long way from the world's normal. So the real question to ask about the Beatitudes isn't, have I worked hard enough to earn God's blessing? Rather it's, do I trust Jesus' version of reality to be true? Do I really believe that Jesus' description of the normal life is enough to test my version against it? And Jesus, in his wisdom, is very aware of the disparity between what he's setting out as normal and the world's normal. He addresses it in the very wording of the Beatitudes. Blessed are they, for they will be. The language is prophetic. It looks towards the future. It bridges the present and the future, the now and the not yet. The kingdom that is and the kingdom that is coming. The blessing is here, God's favour is now, but the fulfilment, the perfection, still lies ahead. And this is where our second reading from that mysterious book of Revelation comes in. What we see in the passage from Revelation today is a glimpse, a rare glimpse, of heaven. In John's vision of eternity, the curtain is pulled back and what is usually hidden is unveiled. And on this All Saints Day, it's good to be reminded of the hope of heaven. What we get in this passage from Revelation is an image of the saints in heaven, worshipping God in heaven's throne room. It says, they worship God night and day within his temple, and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them, they will hunger no more, and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is happening now. When we worship, we're joining with the great company of witnesses who are already worshipping God in heaven. I struggle to remember this sometime, but I was helped recently by some sunflower seeds. I bought a very large packet of sunflower seeds because I read that they were better for me than the nuts I like to nibble. And I munched away on them for a few days. Then I said to Laura, the, these pumpkin seeds are okay, but they're a bit chewy. After you've uh, chewed on a mouthful for a bit, it, it's just like eating bark. And she said, well, you have taken them out of, your, of their husks, haven't you? I said, no, I've just been throwing handfuls into my mouth. And she said, well, no, no, no. You need to take the husk off before you can eat the seed that's inside. How often are we satisfied with just chewing on the husk of life without enjoying the seed that's inside? All Saints Day, is a day to remember that this material world, the world we call normal, is not all that there is. There's a deeper, richer, eternal reality to be enjoyed. A spiritual realm which is already inherited by the saints who have gone before us. Our material world, 
Our normal world is not all that there is. So on this All Saints Day, let's pause and reflect on what we think of as normal. And as we slowly return to the new normal, may that new normal be for us more closely aligned with God's normal. Amen. Let us join together in a time of prayer, knowing we are one in the risen Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, our leaders, and its ministry. We pray for the nation and those in authority and for a peaceful and fair election. We pray for our world and our local community. We pray for those who are sick or suffering and all those who have died. We give thanks for all of the blessings of our lives. Help us, Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime. And hasten the day when all our people with many voices in one united chorus will glorify your holy name. Amen. Please add your own prayers, silently or aloud. And now we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship this day. We have several other things happening today. Um, we have at 2 o'clock an interfaith peace and prayer vigil going on at Waterfront Park with faith leaders from all over San Diego County. And you can either show up and come. We're meeting in the East Plaza. Or you can join actually on the live stream if you'd like to pray with us uh, further for our election and for peace and justice. That's on the uh, Diocesan Facebook page today for live stream. We also have... Um, Jazz Vespers at four o'clock on the patio. So you can sign up for that or register online or just show up and sign in. And our wonderful Festival of Faith is going to be coming to a close this, this week. And tomorrow, Monday, is the last day to enjoy that sound installation between, between 10 and 12. So do come and enjoy that while you still can. Finally, thank you to everybody who has already responded to our stewardship campaign. We're off to a really good start. We have 53 households participating um, towards our goal of 200 households. So thank you, everybody. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm the Reverend Rebecca DeNovo. I am the Minister for Congregational Life here at St. James by the Sea. I have been here for just over four years now, and I love this congregation and so deeply enjoy working as part of the clergy staff team with Father Mark, our rector. My position is first and foremost as the primary overseer of faith formation. Uh, I, so I have the honor of coordinating and running all of our adult education programs, as well as the preparation and education of baptismal candidates and their families in addition to confirmands and those interested in being received into the Episcopal Church. A big part of my role is to connect with families, and so I work closely with our children and youth ministries, especially as it overlaps in many ways with faith formation. I also oversee the welcome and integration of new members in leading our newcomer and welcoming ministry, both uh, online and in person. And believe it or not, even in this pandemic, we get newcomers at St. James every single week online and at our outdoor services. And it's such a joy to get to connect with them individually every week. I also serve in wider diocesan ministries through the Commission on Ministry and the Clergy Enrichment Committee and, and serve in several justice issues throughout our county. As part of the clergy team here, I get to take part in the planning and work of our liturgies and the leadership of worship and preaching and teaching. It is a joy for me to be a part of this wonderful faith community. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Caitlin Webster and I am St. James's Youth and Young Adult Minister. We have two youth groups at St. James, Spark and Ignite both of which are still currently meeting weekly and our ministry aims to contribute to the life of the church by providing a space where teens can come and talk about their lives and process stressors they're facing currently with guidance from their faith. Um, we are aiming to provide a sense of community and connection so that teens feel um, connection between themselves, God, and the church and we find that all the more important during this time when a lot of kids are reporting feeling disconnected from friends and peers. Um, we're really hoping to help kids transition um, from their teenage years into adulthood by modeling the strength and comfort that can come from a faith-centered life. Uh, we also offer activities outside of the weekly youth group meetings. That looks like confirmation classes and like social activities like bonfires and game nights. And our young adult ministry ministers to St. James members who are in their 20s and 30s, early adulthood. And we are also currently meeting over Zoom and we just meet together, provide support and encouragement to each other as we navigate uh, adult stressors and adult life. <laughs> Which is a lot right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's youth ministries from Caitlin. So I'm uh, Miss Gabby, Gabrielle Strickler. You all know me, I'm sure. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about 
uh, children's ministries and um, what we've been doing. So children's ministries continues to provide hope um, and spiritual development to the children and families of St. James. Um, the Godly Play videos model a practice um, that honors and um, supports the child's relationship with God. Um, this method of story and wondering provides structure to what children do naturally, which is to play with God. Um, and um, having it virtually allows parents to engage at home with their children and in so doing, deepen their own faith. Um, I do hear a lot about that from parents and how, and um, other members of St. James about how the videos are um, deepening their faith or providing them hope um, during the week, week, which means a lot to me and continues to make me record the video. So <laughs> um, we're also providing um, parents with support um, and creative ideas and materials um, to um, continue to support and deepen that spiritual practice of play with their children. Um, and we do this virtually um, with things like the Facebook videos, the Gabby Good Stories blog, and we also um, do it by making phone calls occasionally to families and delivering um, uh, craft materials and creative materials. Um, we've also delivered um, children's Bibles recently and um, just continue to try to um, provide that support to families and their children. Um, this is the way families are continuing to be spiritually fed at St. James, and we don't really know what the future holds, um, but I think, uh, I know Caitlin's goal and my goal is continue um, with that relationship building um, and with that community building at St. James. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Bye, everybody.